Hello, welcome everyone, and thanks for the opportunity again to present my demo here. Today, I'm going to talk about a utility web part to manage the SPFX form customizer for your SharePoint list and libraries. A uh, little bit about myself. I'm Siddharth Vagasya. I am a Microsoft MVP and independent consultant. I love to work on SharePoint, Teams, App, Power Platform, Azure.net. These are some of the social handles through which you would be able to connect with me. OK, so uh, this basically web parts will allow uh, the user to associate a form customizer to list and library. Uh, this is the link to the repo from where you would be able to download the source code of the uh, web part which we are going to see today. So let's talk about driving factor. Uh, so we, we all know with SPFX 1.5, a new type of extension, which is form customizer extension has been introduced through which we would be able to customize the form experience for the list and library. So basically we would be able to uh, associate custom new form, custom edit form and custom display form for our list and libraries, right? Uh, so with this uh, to as a part of deployment, what we had to do is we had to associate the particular component ID of the SPFX customer customizer extension to a content type. And there are different ways to do it. We can do it using PowerShell. We can do it using REST API and CSOM. Uh, the uh, purpose or the driving factor for this one is an utility or an admin web part through which we would be able to manage the form customizer on multiple lists and libraries uh, by using the same concept wherein you would be associating, taking the input from the user as in configuration options and then associating a particular form customizer to list and libraries. So this is uh, a feature, uh, I mean kind of summary of the web part which we are going to see today. Uh, uh, it's a simple user interface which will give you to associate and remove a form customizer with list and libraries. Uh, you can use it across code site, uh, site collection. It means you, as it is an admin or a developer uh, utility web part, you don't need to deploy this web part on every site collection. You can deploy it on one site collection, and if you have access to various site collection, you would be able to deploy it on uh, various uh, list from here itself. Uh, there is an ability to select site, list, and content type via dropdown, so you don't have to manually enter the names and everything. Uh, then also has the ability to associate and remove the form customizer. It means it also has a capability to remove the form customizer so that the list can go back to the default out of the box forms which are available. And you can also choose whether you wanted to select a single uh, form type, whether you wanted to just associate view form or you can associate just edit form or you can associate all the three forms. Right. So uh, just a quick technical note, um, uh, the cross of the um, you know web part is just that it is making a REST API call to update the content type property of a particular list. Uh, so the association of the form customizer extension needs to be done via content type. It is not at the list and library level. So uh, with the uh, version, with the release of the form customizer extension, we got four new, six new properties. In fact, for associating this component type with uh, a particular content type, right? And uh, to do that, what you can do is we can do a patch request and the object which we have to pass to that patch request on particular content type is where you can set new form client side component ID, display form client side component ID, edit form client side component ID and the properties associated with if you want to make your extension configurable, right? So yeah, with this, uh, let's quickly see the demo. So what we have is um, now consider uh, there would be two part to the uh, demo as such. Uh, consider because this is an utility web part, so we assume that there is already an uh, SPFX form extension solution, which is already deployed on a targeted site collection, which basically does actually gives the experience of new edit and view form of a particular uh, list and libraries on which we wanted to associate. So we'll take an example of this uh, where we we'll associate a particular solution to this particular list. Right now what we are seeing is that once you click on it, it is opening out of the box uh, view out of the box forms, the edit view and the uh, list form of a particular list, right? And uh, what we will do is, uh, this is another solution. Uh, this is a simple crude demo solution of a form extension uh, wherein we have just two columns, title and description column. And using this title and description, we are basically uh, demoing the crude operations on a particular list and libraries, right? So now we see uh, that it is default forms which have been loaded. And uh, I have 
solution which is uh, deployed here. So this is the web part the uh, which we are focusing on today. So what you get is you get an option to select a site. So we will select the site as uh, targeted site collection where the list would be. You can also uh, put custom site URL here. Then you got to choose which list or library to which you wanted to associate it with. So I'll select form customizer demo. Then you can choose the content type. So uh, as association is done via content type, you can choose it. And by default, uh, there would be item content type, which would be already there for the list, right? And then this is where you have to put the client component ID. Now, from where do we get this client component ID is on the solution, on the base solution where you have your customization being deployed. Uh, there would be a manifest file. In the manifest file, you would see that there is a unique ID associated with each component. Uh, it is very much similar to any other extension type along with the web part which we have. So what we will do is we will put the component ID here, and then we will say new form, edit form, and view forms. We wanted to associate with all the three forms, and I'll just say associate. And once the association is done, uh, it just displays the basic information, and now let's see that whether the association has been done or not right now once i will click on new button you can see that the solution has been uh, associated with the particular list library on the new item form and this is the solution which has been deployed so here we have test uh, I'll, I'll just put a test entry here and i'll just save it and what you can see is you can see that uh, by default it has been uh, associated with it and the web part is also deployed and then uh, the basic operation has been done right so this is overall uh, the demo of the utility web part which we have you also get to choose to remove the association uh, by basically selecting the same component id and everything and then just say that if you wanted to disassociate uh, what we have to do is we have to empty the component id of a particular uh, property which is available and it will automatically uh, disassociate and you can uh, by default see the out of the box forms which are available right so with this uh, let me quickly go to the uh, code walkthrough so uh, uh, web part is anyways uh, simple as such, but what uh, I had been doing is I had been using PNP React controls uh, to basically uh, utilize the already components which are available for the site selection and list selection. So we have a site picker uh, on which we, if we give just the context of the web part where it is running, by default it will able to list down all the sites which where we have access, right? And then what we have is we have a list picker. So based on the site selected, we are using list speaker and we are giving the site URL as in the context property. And uh, uh, based on that, it will automatically give list down all the list and libraries and populate the uh, list speaker. Now, next thing is to select the content type, which we which we are seeing. Uh, one thing is, uh, I know there is an PNP React control which is available for selecting a content type also. But when I was deploying, when I was developing this web part, which probably was in September sometime, there was an issue with that content type web part, which we were not able to use it, uh, and which I believe has been fixed uh, in the latest release. Uh, so I might have to change this to use that selected, but right now I am using the custom dropdown to basically get the content type and uh, display the content type in the dropdown, right? So next thing is, yeah, so this is the code uh, using PNPJS from where we are getting the content type and just associating the content type and putting it in the state object so that the dropdown gets filled with the uh, content type associated to the selected list. Now, uh, the next thing is, uh, these are simple checkboxes, which uh, basically tells, you know, uh, if, with whom we want to associate edit view uh, new form. And then uh, this is the method, uh, the add form customizer method. So this is the main method, which basically does the validation first, whether the required fields are being added. And then what it does, it gives uh, associated via uh, a method uh, from the uh, by using the updating the content type properties right so again same thing we are getting the content type url we are seeing whether it was an add or remove association and then we are uh, updating it via http client request now uh, i'm not sure if i'm right or wrong but uh, the thing is that 
I tried to use PNPJS to update the content type uh, property using PNPJS method, but somehow I did not find the update method. So I went ahead and used uh, HTTP client object method by using the getting the content type URL from the PNPJS, but just making the patch request by creating the body object which is there. So this is to associate the form customizer with uh, uh, the list or library, and then we have uh, the remove part. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so this is the remove association customizer in which same thing we are doing. What we are doing is we are basically calling the same method, which is to associate, but based on add or remove, it will just empty the client side component ID so that we can by default see the old uh, out of the box forms which are available. So yeah, in a way, uh, this was the you know simple utility web part as say this is a targeted to developers or administrator, uh, which would give them an ability to provide an user interface through which they can associate a form customizer being deployed to single list library or across multiple site collections. Uh, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you, Mark. Over to you. Wow, that was great, Siddharth. Thank you. Thank you.